I mentioned at the end of last lecture that we're going to go on to actually 222, but I decided to actually just knock off uh, adding the inversion center uh, to the uh, simpler rotations. And it seemed to make sense to sort of handle the left-hand side of our chart first, because there's actually only two unique, well, there's going to be uh, three unique cases. Um, but um, uh, I should say that actually what's going to happen here is we are going to also figure out that there is a four bar and I'll come back to that but it's one bar three bar and it's showing you also that these are different from four plus one which is you know 4m etc okay so we're going to start by looking at cases that we know this one's kind of tough to see actually and so uh, we're going to do it by inspection because you start to realize that as this one and this one, this one though is more complicated because you say, aha, I can see that if I just take a fourfold, I add an aversion, I get the same, I get this uh, four over m thing we've already talked about. But it turns out after looking at three bar, you start to realize there's one unique structure over here that really we haven't been able to triangulate onto with in any way and we're only going to get to it from looking at the three bar so i wanted to create the unique one bar and three bar and put our four bar up in the corner before we go on to uh, looking at the adding a horizontal and diagonal plane to the 222 so let's start with our last extender then adding to the more simple sim uh, rotations and uh, the extender is going to be the inversion. And we'll look at uh, one, two, three, uh, and uh, four, and six, right? But you know, really only spend time on, uh, on, on these uh, very important ones here. So one bar is uh, pretty straightforward in the sense that um, uh, we haven't we don't have any more complicated, um, uh, you know, rotational axis, right? So we can just go directly to our our figure. Which is that, imagine if I had a, I'm just going to draw it, this, this is not a mirror plane, but I'm just drawing a line here for purposes of guiding my drawing and to show what's happening. So we'll use green because it's a little fainter. So I have my upside motif. Actually, let's go back to what I liked before. Let's make that red. So it's on the upper side here, red. And then um, what happens is if I put an inversion center in the middle, it's just going to induce uh, uh, open circle there. And remember, red is equal to right hand and uh, green is left hand. So it's a pretty simple one. Now, in our chart, they don't bother to draw the symmetry element one because it's so simple. But we should do it, actually, because what this says is... I should draw a little circle in the middle, and that's it. And of course, I'm drawing that in a different color, which is hard to do in black and white, so they might think that's a motif, right? That's why they don't probably create this separate one, because it just be confusing. But if we look at the symmetry element one, right, it would just have an inversion center in the middle of the sphere. And this object that's on the upside, the side that we're looking at, then gets sent through the inversion center in here and pops out on the other side. And that's it. That's one bar that's unique. Uh, it can't be generated from any other um, extender. And it can't, that's it. So there's a one bar. So that, that we know is going to be unique. Uh, two bar, which we skip over, is the same as a 2M. And we'll talk about the 2M, the 4M, and the 6M. Uh, at the end, just to you know, reinforce what we've already said a few times. Now you recall from our previous case um, that 
remember something very interesting about the 3 over m case that um, our 120 degree motifs on the sphere get reflected back by the mirror plane but there is no inversion in the center right so this forces to say well since this is not since this is not a threefold axis plus an inversion like we automatically get from the theorem our combination theorem remember this is ultimately the case that the reason this doesn't work is in our notation here when we apply the horizontal plane this does not equal you know one bar because of that uh, we don't have an inversion center combined with a threefold axis so then you could say aha therefore I need to look at that that's going to generate something new because what I need to do is to take our simple threefold axis and what I need to do is add the extender and see what we get so that again we can do using these same projections so let's exactly do that out so we'll do it with motifs So let's start with the upper side red, which is right-handed. So I have my threefold axis, like we talked about. But we're not going to add the horizontal mirror plane. This time, we're going to add, and again, I'll mix these two representations just to, to you know, this shouldn't go into the motif diagram. But I'm going to do it just to... Um, there's a little inversion center. So now you can see what's going to happen because this guy goes through the center of the sphere, pops out on this other side, right? And it's going to have a left-handed guy on the bottom. This guy's going to pass through there, and it's going to have a left-handed guy over there. This is going to pass through and have a left-handed guy on the other side. Right, so that in itself is a, a unique picture, right? What you see is on the reverse side, you have a, you know, this, remember, since it's on this a sphere, you have this spherical triangle on the back side, and on the front side, we have sort of this. Uh, spherical triangle here, right? So that is a unique new structure called the uh, three bar. Now, if you think about the three bar, you could say, well, are there other combinations of things? You know, certainly if I take a fourfold axis. And I just add an aversion center, you know, I get 4 over M. Right? But let's think a little outside the box, which is the only way to arrive at this one, by the way. A, a red dot. And we're going to do a fourfold axis rotation. So we're going to go pi over 2. Let's do those colors in um, gray. So if I go, you know, this is going to move on this guy and show up over here. And so what I'm going to do is, is over here. Now, if, if I just let this land here, then obviously I'm going to head towards my fourfold axis, right? But I am doing pi over two, right? So I want to go pi over two, but I want to fold in a little concept like our glide operator where we say you know can we have a unique 
a new kind of step, right? And, you know, there is a justification for this. If you let me go back to the case we're just at. So we were just saying that there was this unique thing called three bar. Right? And the way we got here was we had a threefold rotation and we added an inversion. Okay, and we abbreviated that notation to three over bar. Now, um, if we do that same kind of thing with four, like I said, you're just going to end up with four over m, right? Because if I just say, well, let's take four dots and then I reflect them across there, we already did that one. But there is a unique thing you can see here that is important buried in three bar. And that's the following. We haven't really talked about the full group theory aspect of this three bar. And so we generated these guys, uh, you know, from inversion through this center point by a simple threefold rotation. But we didn't go back and ask, well, what's the relationship, say, between this one and this one? I can't put anything in here because it doesn't pass through the center. There's no reflection plane, whatever. So I have a, a whole group, which I know is valid, but I actually have missed some sort of operation that relates this to that that must be in here, right? And it turns out that that is a new operation and the only way we have to invent a new operation because the only way we can relate these two is through uh, what's called a roto inversion. So if I think about this, the way that I can, you know, get there is always through two operations. I can rotate here 2 pi over 3 and then I can invert. That's the only way I can get there, right? So there is this sort of rotate plus invert buried in three bar. And we're going to call that roto inversion. So you can see now why we're going to say, well, let's apply that concept uh, to other things. And of course, it doesn't produce uh, unique things in any of the crystallographic things we care about, except for this one. So if I take the roto inversion concept and now apply it to a pi over two rotation, and that's where the four, pi, four bar comes in. So see here, the rotation part is 2 pi over 3, which is why it's 3. The inversion is why we have the bar on top, right? Now, the other way that we had written that before was just that, ah, you know, I produced these three guys because of threefold axis, and then I used an inversion center, right? Uh, but remember that before 3 plus i does not equal this, right? So it already tells you the three bar is kind of unique, and the reason it's unique is that it's a roto inversion, okay? So now let's apply that concept, roto inversion, four bar. Uh, so the four means that I'm going to rotate pi over two. But before I put it down, now let's go through an aversion center in the center and I come out the other side here. 
So that means that I've got opposite handedness down below here, right? Now let's do the same sense again. Let's rotate pi over 2 using the same operation again and then reflect through the middle, right? Remember, this is on the opposite side of the sphere. So it's kind of going around behind here, but now when it gets, it comes back to the top surface. And so that's producing a red guy there, right? And of course, we can continue. On the surface, I come over here, I go through and I appear on the back side creating a beautiful, new, and different uh, um, point group that I could not have gotten anywhere else, right? And that's why it's called 4-bar, is that it uh, is, is a roto-inversion. So it's taking, you know, one of these guys, and every relationship of one element to another is via... Uh, a two-step process. Now what that means is that uh, I didn't draw this over here, but let's go back and think about the group. We had thought that the group originally here was, um, you know, we had a 2 pi over 3, remember, threefold axis, right, and a... So uh, in this case, we thought that this was going to be our end, that, that, that was the limit, right? Because the way we generated this image when I did 3-bar was I just took the, the three-fold rotation and then each individual element I inverted and that's how I got the pattern. But I had not come back and asked, well, um, is there a relationship between these two that can't be represented with the uh, with the uh, operations that already exist? And the answer is, you know, we we're missing the, uh, the roto inversion, right? So um, how do we represent that in the group? is that clearly we need to have a 2 pi over 3 rotation with uh, inversion. And I have to do that for the other one as well to relate other elements. And so that is actually the full thing. So, you know, if we kind of hid this part, that's how we generated it. But if we had done an identity matrix, we would have discovered that when I relate uh, particular things there, I would have to come up with a new operation. And so we are forced to put in roto inversion. So now if we do the same thing for the four par, if we come back four bar and we come back and let's look at the, you know, what we just generated. Uh, we would look at the elements of how uh, they're related to each other it's pretty clear that the way that I could relate these two is by a rotation here, uh, sorry, a rotation here plus an inversion, right? Uh, I can relate this element here to this one through an a pi rotation, and I can relate this to an a pi rotation. So what this means is that if I were to think about this group, I would have certainly uh, a, a two-fold rotation that, that clearly relates this guy to that guy and that guy to that guy. But um, uh, this relationship to here can only be related from a roto-inversion, right? So we're going to have a roto-inversion of pi over 2. Right? Now there won't be an a pi inversion because let's look at that. If I do a pi and invert, I would get a new green circle over here and that's not, not valid. Will there be a 3 pi over 2? Well, let's look at that. So here's 1 pi over 2, here's another pi over 2, here's another pi over 2, and invert, and the answer is yes. And 
And so there are the elements for uh, four bar in in the group. Now, uh, when you look at that, you say, well, what is a symbol that I'll use for it? Because I actually have a twofold subgroup in here, right? But on the other hand, I actually have some sort of element of fourfold because of the pi over two in here. And, and, and in a way, you look at the angles at least, you know, that's kind of a fourfold thing, right? But I have a roto inversion, right? So the way that is written is it's written as symbol like that. And so that's four bar uh, roto inversion. So these are what I call n plus one bar, and they all result in actually two over m uh, symmetries, right? Now the way that we got into, and I'll just this is no longer considered n plus one, but just to distinguish what we just did, uh, what we saw was that actually uh, th um, this did not produce uh, an inversion center. In fact, it produced uh, something that had. Uh, roto inversion related to its members and so we represented that by a unique thing right and then we said aha let's go back and it turns out that in the fourfold case uh, we can actually then take roto inversion our new two-step operation and then we can take um, our fourfold axis and add in this uh, roto inversion, which is really not a fourfold axis anymore. So in a sense, it's kind of saying, you know, do a pi over two rotation, but you know, use that, and that gave us uh, this unique character, which we didn't see the first time around because not it can't be derived from axial combination, and, and it's in four bar. So. That leads us to uh, this part of the diagram here, where what we have just done is by adding an inversion center to the simple rotations, we created two new elements that are another one that we put at the end over here, which is not shown here, which will show when we go back to the to the bigger uh, all three panels together is that we've added another one up here on the end because it's unique and it doesn't fit in anywhere else and we call it four bar and it has the unique character of this and it's got a uh, different kind of symbol there so that's a unique thing that goes on the first line right it doesn't uh, it's a unique thing and belongs up there and it's not a product of taking one of these other ones and adding an aversion center to it. Uh, it is using roto inversion to generate a fundamental group at the top. So now we've uh, crossed off everything that you're seeing here. And so what we'll do now is head over to this region over here where we had the more complicated, non-simple rotational things we had the axial combinations we had started with two 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 and what we'll do is we'll add uh, the extenders to that and see what we get